So the entire world must pay tribute to Yahweh for his unselfish and illumicinary donations to all men. For Yahweh is the giver of light. And unless all men come and worship the king of Israel, they're not going to be blessed. Zechariah 14. Zechariah chapter 14. And if you don't come and worship the king of Israel, you'll starve to death and die from much sickness. Starting at verse 16 and 17 and 18, read. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king the Lord Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacle. We read up read verse 19 so you'll understand why. Read. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So I don't care whether you're a Hindu or Buddhist, a Muslim or Christian or whatever you say you are, you're going to have to bow to the King of Israel. You're going to have to bow to Yahweh of hope. That's it. That's just the way it is. And I happen to be the King of Israel. And that's the way that is. Some, some uh, real slick reporters, have, they came and they interviewed me and they wanted to know, well, uh, are you going back to uh, Israel? See, not anytime soon. Well, uh, you know, they're fighting over there. They may not want you to come in if I'm not worried about that. See, that's not the problem. I don't mind who wants to fight over old Jerusalem. <laughs> I'm not concerned who wants to die over old Jerusalem. I'm not about that. I'm not about old Jerusalem. It, let me tell you the one that I'm, I'm establishing. It's called New Jerusalem. That's what I'm bringing. New Jerusalem. And guess where New Jerusalem is? In the Middle East? It, it, it won't be new unless I go to the Middle East. New Jerusalem is wherever I choose to place my name. And I choose to place my name in America. I'll just clean up the farm here. I don't worry about the desert. I've been through the desert 40 years one time. That was enough for me. <laughs> in the days of Moses. You, you don't want to see a desert. Desert is rough, boy, even. Have y'all just seen a picture of a desert? That's desolate. You think God is dumb enough to go set up camp on a desert? 
I, I wouldn't want to hang out with no guy that say, I just hang on the desert. Not me, not no desert God. No, no, I don't know. I'd rather come to rulership in, in New Jerusalem where there's already pavement and highways and just need some redoing. <laughs> it's all about New Jerusalem and where I choose to place my name. I said the entire world must pay tribute to Yahweh. Did, did I just prove my case? That's what Feast of Tabernacles, and it lists Feast of Tabernacles. Isn't that beautiful? And all who don't come and worship the King of Israel, they'll get too much rain where they don't need it. And no rain where they need it. Right here in America. And now there'll always be plenty of food where I am. The righteous will never forsaken, nor will the seed of the righteous ever have to bake bread. <laughs> Yahweh is the elemosinary God. He's the good God. He's the giving God. That's what I am. And in conclusion, the Feast of Tabernacles possesses both a seasonal significance and a historical significance. It carries both a universal meaning and a particular meaning for all the people of the earth. Isn't that amazing that Yahweh designed Feast of Tabernacles for his children to keep forever? While at the same time, it's designed to bless all the families of the earth. All the nations of the earth. Isn't that interesting? That eliminates all other nations from being jealous of us being chosen by Yahweh. And in history, they've been jealous of us. Look at them. They're all rich, sophisticated, upright, upstanding people, moral and clean. We can't do anything to them because Yahweh has his arms wrapped around them, protecting them. Look at him. He has them all fixed up in a city. They got all the gold and the silver and the jewels and the money. And they get jealous of you when you have all that rich stuff. Huh? Hey, I hate those Jews, man. They got all the money. That's what people say on earth. Try to run them out of all countries because they got all the money. They got all the money. That's what they say. <laughs> Well, they sure gonna have to get jealous of me because I'm going for all of it. All the money. And I don't want anybody following me that doesn't want all the gold and silver. Don't come near me with your post out. Don't want a poor-minded person around me. The poor can't go to heaven. Well, what about that scripture that says, Blessed are the poor and the meek, for they shall inherit. Yeah, but you have to change. And you read where you have to change? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you shall inherit, but not because you stay poor. Can't you, can't you imagine how much hell it would be in heaven with a bunch of poor folk in it? Walking up to the angel talking about loan me ten dollars to Friday, ain't it? <laughs> no, don't come up to me trying to borrow nothing. To come into Yahweh's heaven, you have to be rich. Well, gosh, Yahweh been Yahweh? I've never been rich in my life. That's why I'm coming to you. To help you to be rich. That's what I'm here for. To make you rich. I didn't come to take anything from you. And I never have. I only come to give you an abundance of life. An abundance of wealth. That's all I've done. That's all I'm doing. 
You give me your pennies and I give it back to you in dollars. The world is a witness. It's a miracle how I am building what I am with your pennies. It's a miracle. And then there are all the parasites all around trying to take from us. How many are ready for heaven on earth? Tired of wars and hell and hunger and that's what I'm here to bring. Peace on earth forever. Can't have peace and be broke. Won't be no homeless folk living in my kingdom. Yeah, I'll have all of them out. They'll be picking peanuts or something. You, you will not eat in the kingdom of heaven and don't work. Only man I found they'll listen to is Yahweh. Now they'll stop and listen to Yahweh. It's because Yahweh is God. It's, he's, he's the black man's God. He's your God. It's not, it's not important right now that he's the God of everybody. It's the point is he's your God. Yahweh really is your God. And the God of Israel is the only God. That's what you have to know. Praise God. And I'm the only one allowed to tell you and teach you. Nobody else is allowed to teach you. But America is designed for my coming. I wouldn't come to any other country but America. Can you imagine me coming to Tiananmen Square? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Nah, man, I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> I'm not going over there putting up no Statue of Liberty. Not in China, I'm not. <laughs> It's already here. All you have to do is take advantage of the opportunity. The opportunity for your, you to be righteous is wide open here. There's no law in America that prevents you from being good. There's not one law on the books of America that will stop you from being upright, ethical, moral, and honest and honorable. There's nothing to prevent you from being an imminent, pe imminent people, a people of high repute. <laughs> Plenty of laws on the books against your being a criminal, and there ought to be. Because I sure have plenty of laws to teach you about not being a criminal. The laws of Yahweh say, thou shalt not steal. That's clear. And I wouldn't need a prison for thieves. I solved that problem. Yahweh's laws that I teach say, thou shalt not kill. And we wouldn't have to worry about whether there's a prison for people who kill. Won't be in a prison. Under my rule, I will eliminate all prisons. I'll never work and pay $40,000 a year to keep some criminal alive in a prison. The laws of Yahweh are very clear about killers. <laughs> the only people who don't want to see Yahweh's laws in effect that solve all crime are those who get rich from criminals. The system of America is designed to get rich from criminal activity. It's designed for criminals. The only ones that have rights are criminals. The victims of crime don't have any rights right now. But there's opportunity in America for a crime-free society. Yes, it's opportunity. America is wide open for an opportunity 
for you to have pornography wide open on every corner, have a whole house on every corner. That opportunity exists in America. If that's what the people want, they can all get together, vote it in, that's what it is. That doesn't mean Yahweh will condone it and let it last forever, but you have that opportunity. So you have an opportunity in America to have no pornography at all. Hmm? You have an opportunity in America to be poor, and you have an opportunity to be rich. I love, I love this opportunity here. You got to, you have to be crazy not to love this opportunity that's afforded you in America. This is the world's greatest land of opportunity right here. I just love it. You have an opportunity to be good and nobody can stop you. You have an opportunity to own Miami, to own Dade County. You can own every square inch of it if you want to. That's your opportunity. Ask the Cubans. <laughs> Y'all who's not from here? Read it. Go, go around and ask who the Cubans. They'll tell you, they own Miami. When they, when they own it in the last 20 years. Came off the boat from Cuba with nothing. But everybody came to America with nothing. Huh? Everybody was an immigrant to America, the land of the wilderness, but it was an opportunity. World's greatest experiment. You have an opportunity to change your ghetto into heaven. It doesn't have to stay a ghetto. You have the opportunity to change it. I'm changing it block by block to give you an example. I'm an example. My people who don't know Yahweh wanted to blame Reagan for having nothing. Now they want to blame Bush for having that. I accomplished everything I have under Reagan and Bush without the help of either. Proven what? The opportunity is here in Yahweh. And that's what Feast of Tabernacles is all about, is to remind us of our history, which is our past, and by studying our history, we can see the pitfalls of when we reject Yahweh's laws, we were cursed, put in slavery, suffer. When we return to Yahweh, we are blessed. So I invite you to the season of blessings. You, you no longer have to be cursed. You can be blessed. All you have to do is come into the knowledge of God. <laughs> 